Cordless mini blinds like this are inexpensive, but they aren't very cute. So today I'm gonna show you how to take a piece of fabric and some store-bought mini blinds and make a custom functional Roman shade. Our first step is to get the fabric cut to size and then we're going to hem three sides of it so that we have nice clean lines to attach to the mini blinds. So I measured my window. I'm gonna add two and a half inches to each measurement so that I have a nice margin for my hem and also that'll make it look nice on the outside of our house too. Gotta to impress the neighbors. Just gonna make a few marks of the same measurement down the fabric so that I could cut it. Just making sure I marked enough. I did not. Let's mark one more time. This fabric has a nice grid, so it'll be easy to follow the cut lines. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna fold this end over and iron it in just a bit. Now we're gonna measure our height. And don't worry if you don't know how to sew, we're not going to use a sewing machine. All right, so we added two and a half inches to our measurements, and that's because we're going to fold it a half inch over, iron that, and then fold it another half inch on the two sides and the bottom of the fabric. So we're gonna do that now with an iron so that we get nice, crisp lines. Then I'll show you about using the no-sew hem tape. I mean, I already measured that the end of the fabric, the factory edges, was about half an inch, that's why I'm not measuring it now. All right, so we're gonna fold it over again, just do the same size as what we just ironed, and we'll have an inch excess folded up in there. Now this is the no-sew hem tape that we're using. It's called, or name brand is Stitch Witchery, but it also goes by no-sew hem tape. And my three-year-old unrolled my hem tape so I have the lovely wad to work with. All you have to do is stick it up in here, lay your hem down, and then apply heat. It's basically like an adhesive, kind of glues the two sides of the fabric together. I'll put links to my retro iron and the no-so hem tape below, so you can do this project too. A neat little thing, you don't even have to cut it, you just put the iron on it, and pull it, and it breaks it off. All right, one side down, two more to go. Now two of the extra inches is taken up with the hem on either side, but since the fabric is not rigid and it's kind of flowy, it doesn't fill in your window 100%. The extra half inch of fabric will help give you 100% privacy in your window. All right, I'm gonna hold it down a little extra on this corner since I'm folding multiple layers of fabric since that one side's already been hemmed. I'm nervous about this grid showing the flaws in my hem, but it is nice that I can turn it over and line up the lines with the reverse and know that it's gonna be straight. The fabric panel is ready to go, so I set it aside so I can get the mini blinds prepped. Now I mentioned before that these are cordless, so you might need to clip it to your table to keep them open. Just depends on your model. What we're going to do is cut the cord, but you wanna be careful that you don't cut the cord that causes it all to retract, and that's this center cord on the outside of both of my mini blinds. Sometimes if your blinds are longer, you'll have another cord in the middle, so just be careful of that. Otherwise, you basically just have to buy new blinds. Here we go. There we go, now you can see that cord that you need to keep a lot better. So now I'm just gonna cut each individual blind to get it loose from this very important string. So once I get it loose, it should be able to, yeah, slide right out. 
of the ladder strings. I call it a ladder string, so it looks like a ladder. So I'm gonna cut all but three of the blinds because that's what will glue to the fabric panel to make it all work. I'll show you the spacing of it so you can decide how many you need for your window. Depending on the quality of your mini blinds, you might be able to just rip it instead of cutting it, and then you reduce the chance of cutting the very important string. I'll also put a link below for installing privacy window film. If you don't want like a fabric in your bathroom, you can apply a film to it that makes it look like frosted glass. Now I'm gonna go and cut the other stuff from the top. Not the good string. So I should be able to just rip it all the way and slide it out from the middle. There we go. Cut these ladder from the ones I'm keeping. Okay, it's starting to look like something. All right, now I just have to get all of these loose. There we go. Now that we have all the blinds out of the way, we can figure out how to get this ladder string detached. It looks like the middle string goes through it just in a few spots. So I'm just gonna cut that loose, and then we can go on to the next step. Just go slow so you don't cut the wrong thing. Okay. Now we can get the glue out. Okay, so I had the fabric laid out where this is the bottom. And I had a little extra up here, so I'm gonna mark my finished dimension where I'm going to glue the header of the blinds to. So I'll go ahead and get that marked. It's 37 inches for my window. I'll go ahead and mark that in a couple of places. Then I'll show you how I have it positioned to get the Roman shade effect. So I wanna have a little bit of a bubble at the top. So I'm gonna glue my first slat at 21 inches. Nope, I lied, 20 inches. So I'll mark that in a couple spots as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mark 10 inches from the bottom. I'm only gonna have to glue two slats to get the Roman shade effect for my window because it's only 37 inches tall. But if yours is any larger, you're probably gonna wanna add three, four, five slats depending on how big your window is. Okay, and just to give you a visual, so this is where my first slat will be glued and when it gets retracted, it'll come up and meet my 37 inch mark and then this will come up and meet that. So we will have a nice little Roman shade that sits on the window. I'm actually not gonna glue a slat, I'm gonna glue the bottom piece to my bottom mark. Get lined up and I'll show you what I'm using. Okay, so I have a couple of different glues. This is just tacky glue, which is just an all around, all purpose craft glue. Then we have a fabric fusion which is a permanent fabric adhesive. This one is also a permanent fabric adhesive, but this is for like clothing that you might need to wash. So whichever one you have available, easy access, you can use. Okay, I'm gonna run some glue on this. And remember, we made this a little bit wider than the window, so you're gonna have a little bit of excess on the end of your slats. You do wanna make sure your slats and the blind mechanisms are centered on your fabric and you have equal margins of the fabric on either side. We're gonna try a different glue. I'm gonna line the slat up on the bottom side of my marks. Okay, got that clamped. All right, I have this where I want it. I'm gonna go get something heavy to weigh it down while the glue dries. I'm gonna get our weight in place. Just set that down. Okay. Now the last step I have is to glue this header to my top line and I actually have too many slats, so bye-bye. I guess I only needed one. Never know until you know. Again, I'm putting it just below my top mark. Be 
because the clamps raised up the header, I didn't want the fabric to sag underneath, so I put a two by four under there so I could get it nice and tight and get it all clamped together so the glue can dry. And now we just have to play the waiting game. The next step is to hang it in the window. With the Roman shade snapped in place, you now have something that's functional and decorative, and you can't beat that. Thanks for checking in.